I've been doing TMS for several years now and um, kind of have a feel for which patients are going to do well and which patients are going to have disappointing experiences. And um, one thing that I knew prior to starting patients from the literature was that people on benzodiazepines, Ativan, Xanax, Clonopin, Restoril, uh, benzodiazepines reduce brain electricity. They're used for anxiety. But people on high doses, and by high dose I mean one milligram or greater, don't do as well with transcranial magnetic stimulation. What we're doing is we're putting a high frequency magnet against the brain, the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, and we are stimulating brain electricity. We're causing the flow of electricity through that part of your brain to bring your logical brain back back to life, right? Okay, so the, the logical brain, the executive functions include planning, organization, time management, memory recall, focus of attention, mood regulation. When we face difficulties, when we face threats, as we always do, until you're dead, there are gonna be threats. As long as the IRS exists, there are going to be threats, okay? So, you'll always have threats. But if your higher brain is able to think of ways around it to mitigate the damage from the stress, it can greatly reduce your subjective anxiety, okay? And therefore, lift your mood, take you out of your depression. And just by increasing the juice, increasing the neurotransmitter flow of the prefrontal cortex, you then have greater ability to inhibit the emotional brain, the amygdala, okay? So it works really good, but what if you're on Xanax, Clonopin, Ativan, these benzodiazepines? Well, these things, like alcohol, have depressant effects, and they reduce brain electricity, and people who are on high-dose benzos don't do as well with transcranial magnetic stimulation. I've had a lot of people come in and they want it right now. Oh, I've heard about this TMS and, and I'm depressed and I really could use it. And they're on like three to five, six, sometimes six milligrams of Ativan or Xanax or Clonopin. And I'm like, no, no, not until we wean these doses down to at least only one milligram. I would prefer zero, to be honest, okay? so. Number one, if you're on benzos, I recommend that you wean that dose down to zero if possible because we want to ensure the best outcome. Now, what about other things? Substance abuse. If a person is actively involved in substance abuse, heroin, cocaine, marijuana, alcohol, if you're actively using, these are things that really destroy your mood for a lot of different reasons. And as long as that is actively going on, the likelihood of improving your depression with TMS is just not very high, okay? And I just feel that you're wasting your time if you have an active problem that you're not dealing with and you come in for TMS. Probably it's not gonna work. Now a third group, people going through trauma right now that's causing their depression or has has greatly exacerbated your depression now what do i mean by trauma what if you're going through a divorce what if you just lost your house what if you've got a sick or dying child or sick or dying spouse or sick or dying parent what if a loved one has recently been charged with a horrible crime and it's going to go away to prison like your only child okay these are very distressing circumstances. And if this is 90% of the depression that you're feeling, TMS isn't gonna make that go away. TMS helps you think clear so you can problem solve through your own problems. But if you're grieving over somebody else, over a situation that you have no control over, I don't, you know, I mean, thinking clear about it may help a little bit, but you know, uh, TMS is probably not the best choice if your expectations are that it's going to make you not care about losing a child or losing a spouse or losing a house. All right. All right. Another situation. What about the situation where you have somebody that's been depressed their whole life? They can't remember a time when they enjoyed life. 
they were depressed as a child, maybe a lot, a lot of child abuse took place or child neglect, and they've been depressed their whole life. On a scale of one to 10, with 10 being the best they ever felt and one being the worst they ever felt. They felt a 10 maybe one time, and that was when they got a shot of Demerol in the hospital, okay? <laughs> Bad example, but hey, if that's, if you've been depressed that long, um, I think TMS is very good at returning to your normal happy baseline, but if you don't have a normal happy baseline, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. Now sometimes that's because you have something called a personality disorder, especially if there are something called cluster B traits. That includes borderline, uh, antisocial, histrionic, and so forth. We got a lot of different antisocial type things, a lot of different personality disorders. This is not going to fix your personality disorder, okay? And very often, people with personality disorders have had some difficulty in childhood. There have been some adverse childhood events that have contributed to this. Therapy is really necessary. Now, if you're willing to engage in therapy and if you are willing to change, if you're willing to, I, I especially like dialectical behavioral therapy, DBT for borderlines, DBT for anxiety, and if you have a lot of anxiety with your depressive symptoms, I highly recommend the workbook DBT for anxiety. Just get those DBT skills, those dialectical behavioral skills to help you deal with change. If you're willing to do that, and if you're willing to realize that you need to change, that your interpretation of reality needs to change in order for you to find fulfillment and happiness, in order for you to be willing to realize that you need to grow interpersonally, spiritually, and so forth, and maybe even change your diet and so forth. If you are willing to make changes to get better, then maybe TMS is for you because it can help you think clearer and help you participate in the therapy. But if you're expecting TMS to solve your problems, and you don't think you need to change, then I think you're gonna be disappointed. It might work for a while, but no matter where you go, there you are. And your mal if, you, if you have a maladaptive technique of interpreting change, if you interpret all change as negative and you tend to overreact and see things as either all good or all bad, you really need therapy. And to not engage in therapy and just get TMS you're putting a band-aid on things and it might help for a while but I would really prefer if we're gonna go through this I really want you to have a good experience and I would prefer that you engage in therapy and you know either during the TMS or right after the TMS go at it with that therapy because the TMS can enhance your cognitive skills so that you can participate but you must be willing to participate in the therapy okay so, those are just a few things. If you're considering transcranial magnetic stimulation, I'd be happy to treat you. But if you fall into one of these categories, several of these, I really don't want you to show up. I would rather you um, get over your trauma first uh, because this isn't going to make that go away. And if it's a personality issue, then please understand that you need the therapy. It, in order for you to get long-lasting, sustained benefits, therapy is going to be necessary. So, if you don't fall into any of those categories, and you just fell into a depressive episode, and it's lasted several months, and it's just not letting go, and you're in that very dark place, and you have a happy to get back to, and you're already on your path to towards growing interpersonally and spiritually and holistically, then TMS could really be of great benefit for you. Okay? I hope this helps. Thanks for watching. There's something that I didn't discuss the last time, and I, I, I really need to throw this in. How do you decide between the two forms of uh, neuromodulation? We have TMS, transcranial magnetic stimulation, which I do, and then there is electroconvulsive therapy, which I don't do. Um, there is a difference between the two. Now, I think they're very similar in terms of effectiveness for many people, um, in fact, I think for the majority of people, it doesn't make a lot of difference. But there are some situations where I think that 
TMS is a good first choice. And I think for most people it would be. For me, if it was me, I would choose TMS first simply because uh, ECT is associated with some degree of memory loss. Some people have lost the memories of their wedding and the birth of all their children. I, I've actually had patients where that occurred. But, you know, in all fairness, sometimes ECT has a little bit more potency. And when you have somebody, especially an elderly patient, who is so depressed that they've gone into a severe pseudo-dementia, and by pseudo-dementia, what I mean is that they just shut down, they're not eating very much, they're not moving, uh, their cognition is very slow, but it's not because of acceleration of their Alzheimer's or their vascular dementia, it's just depression. And it's just pervasive, and grandmas or grandpas just turned off to the world. And I have seen ECT bring these people back to life within a very, very short time. So, hey, you know, sometimes, even though it does cost a little bit of memory, it can actually lengthen somebody's life and certainly lengthen the quality of their life. So there are times when ECT is awesome, okay, especially in cases where somebody has gone into a pseudo-dementia. I mean, their there's brains are so slow that they, they now appear demented because of their, of their depression. And especially in the elderly, it, it, it's been used historically very effectively for that. Also, um, when you have some really frail elderly people, TMS is not comfortable and their, 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 their skin is thinner, and a lot of times, especially if their memory is already going, their threshold for pain isn't very high, and so if they have a high motor threshold, um, it can be not just uncomfortable, but downright painful. I've had some very old individuals literally jump when they got, when they, when they received the treatment, and I'm thinking, I said, no, absolutely not, I'm not gonna, torture somebody. Younger people deal with it really well and usually by the second week it doesn't hurt anymore. But for frail elderly people I think ECT is probably the way to go. They're knocked out. They're not going to feel anything. So ECT a rapid way of bringing them out of this pseudo severe depression. Now also if you got a patient that's really really suicidal you know even though I think they're similar in many many ways um, I've kind of, if you have somebody who's really bent on suicide and they, they're planning it and they, they, they're, they're really just that far away, if they're really that close to suicide, my impression now is do the ECT. Forget about the memory loss. If they are that close to wanting to kill themselves, if they have had serious attempts in the past and they really don't want to live and this is a last ditch effort, and they're, they have plans, I would recommend ECT, okay? Just don't play around. Um, the recovery in TMS, some people, many people start showing improvement after the third week, okay? Um, most fourth week for sure. I've had people though not have any improvement until two to four weeks after the last treatment, okay? With ECT, you tend to see results quicker than that. So if you're suicidal, if you're really suicidal, maybe you need to think about ECT first. Now, if you're not truly suicidal, you just have thoughts of not wanting to live anymore, and you have a really strong support network, so you would never seriously hurt yourself because you don't want to hurt the people that love you, and you've never, never tried, and you really wouldn't because of your religious convictions or because you have people that truly love you and you don't want to hurt them then TMS is great. But what if you don't? What if you're really suicidal and you don't have anybody? Or you have a spouse that's saying, look, either kill yourself or suck it up and go back to work and stop this depression nonsense. If that's the kind of spouse you have, then you need ECT because, you know, if it's like get better or else kill yourself or move on or get a job, and there is a rush to this, and you don't really have any true friends that care about you. Uh, and if you're in that situation, and you need rapid resolution of your symptoms or else, then probably ECT is the way to go. But if it's just passive suicidal ideation, and what I mean by that is that you have thoughts of not wanting to live anymore, 
if you came down with terminal cancer, you wouldn't want to treat it because you just let it take its course. But you wouldn't really do anything about it. You don't have any plans on actually hurting yourself. That's kind of passive. Real passive suicidal ideation, though, is where you're, you're fantasizing about your suicide. You're fantasizing a plan. You don't have any intent, but you find yourself on a regular basis fantasizing on how cool it would be if you killed yourself and just got rid of your problems that way. Even if you don't have an intent, that, that's passive suicidal ideation. And again, if you've got a support group, if you've got people that love you, and you, you, you know in your heart you wouldn't do it because you wouldn't want to hurt them, then maybe you want to try TMS first. But if you're not sure, um, and if you don't have that support group, you don't, you really, you're really not confident that anybody really cares about you that much, I would recommend ECT, okay? So I hope that that gave you some idea. You know, you got some choices with your severe depression. You got your TMS, which doesn't have any uh, memory loss, no general anesthesia necessary. Um, you come in five days a week for anywhere from a month to a month and a half. You know, you're awake during the procedure versus ECT, fewer number of sessions, general anesthesia, a little bit of memory loss, maybe some more than a little memory loss, but rapid results. It's up to you, okay? But I just want to make sure you're aware of your options for your particular situation, okay?